I really liked our game in there in terms of our gap. Doug and I were just talking about this. You, you, defenses kind of have one of two ideas for the most part. We're either going to give a player like, so we'll say Barkov instead of McKinnon because it's the same idea. Tremendous speed. We're either going to give you a whole bunch of ice um, and then we're going to ask you to go through five guys or we're going to give you no ice at all. So we're going to try to hard gap you and take away your ice, eliminate the pass, eliminate the play that comes to you. So that's basically the two different ideas. We're a hard gap team. So that, these cliches that the coaches always fire out a limit their time and space. Well, that's a style of defense, and we were really good at that in, in uh, Colorado. I, I liked our gap. Now, if you do it right, you're still going to get a McKinnon or a Rantanen or one of these guys, and they're going to beat you maybe one in ten times, and you, you have to live with that a little bit, and that's where Sergey comes in. And, but with that one they beat you, the idea would be we're going to knock down three or four and we're going to be able to turn that three or four into two or three, and that's the advantage. It's the kind of the gambling rules. You're looking for a percentage advantage, and that's what we will try to do against a very fast, very potent team that has some uniqueness. So I think 60 points with Makar on the blue line, you just, just don't see that. So we have to be mindful. It's not just the two or three forwards. Their defense is so very active that uh, then they skate so well. That gap idea that I talked about, it's a lot harder than, than it sounds. Well, why wouldn't you just do it? Well, those guys are still, everybody's got a plan, right? And uh, those guys are so good, they'll still generate some on us tonight. When you talk about the fourth line last couple of years, Gadget specifically, obviously injury during training yeah. camp, injury start the season. And then when you see him, when you saw him on, get on the ice and you mentioned the, how he does make tactical mistakes, yeah. so just were you surprised with how quickly he was able to fit in and be able to play? The yeah, he's, play he's, I think it's taken a lot, not longer than we've hoped, but it's been a long ride for him because that injury was very difficult for him and it kept him out of a learning curve. So we play a completely different style of game than he had played in San Jose. So it's all brand new. And then new players, and then he, so he had his injury, came back up, banged up, then he got sick for a little bit. The big, the, the, what we're hoping for, and, and I would stand by, he, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He understands it. When you watch his games from last year, and some of it he played with Steve Lorenz, he would play left and right based on the guys that he's playing with on their position. So again, he, we thought, but he, he's covering off the other players and the decisions that they're making. So we knew he was a pretty smart guy, but he's doesn't make mistakes. The challenge for him was going to be foot speed. Could he get up to speed enough to play the gap game that we want to play? And it was hard because he just wasn't on the ice with us in training camp. Where, so he missed a bit, but, he's, but he is. Like he's, he's getting better. He's getting faster. Now he's used to our reads, so he'll be able to just make decisions earlier and earlier. And I thought that Lomberg and Stenland were, were quick too, right? So we're Lomo's fast player, and uh, Stenny's a smart player. So those two guys can play a quick game even if, if it's not all foot speed.